Hi guys, welcome back to my Steps to Sobriety, my show on YouTube and as a podcast with me, your host, Stefan Neff. Another day, another fantastic interview. This time I'm beaming to Austria, um, a country I, I love quite a bit, being a neighbor to, to my home, Germany. And I've got Bernadette Bruckner with me. Bernadette is a woman with a superpower. And since I've got also a, quite a weak spot for super superheroes and heroines out there, Bernadette, I needed to have you on my show because you have learned the superpower of being yourself, showing up when it matters and being the true you. No masks, no nothing, just the true you. And for that, wow, I commend you because in nowadays, world that is a rarity. Bernadette, thank you so much for coming onto my show. It's my deepest pleasure. Mm. Right from Austria, willkommen. <laughs> nah, yeah. <laughs> to New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. And I'm totally thrilled because it was the same when I read your book. I was like, you have to be on my podcast. I'm so sorry. You have to be there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is true, isn't it? Because there are so many people who, who continue to live their lives in, uh, on, on social media and in real life with masks and masks and masks. Mm -hmm. And you, it's so rare that we nowadays see the true, the true color of people. And uh, it is, yeah, no, I mean, it is wonderful. So obviously here, we too are preaching to the converted. We too are talking exactly the same language. Mm -hmm. But both of us, we've had different backgrounds. I mean, yes. you were a girl who was breathing business uh, throughout much of your life. Tell us a bit about, about the old Bernadette. The old, yes. <laughs> I'm I'm originally coming from a bakery, so I always say since I'm I can walk or run, I had to help my mother in the bakery and in the coffee shop. And uh, it 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 I always say there is one thing what I learned the most that was working. <laughs> and today I can say after more than fifteen companies, I worked abroad. I worked a lot in Austria. And a lot of people would say, I'm a workaholic. And I say, yes, that's what I learned. Um, there is a lot of stuff what I, what I saw, a lot of stuff what I experienced, a lot of stuff what was actually not nice. But there is one thing what I learned the most. I always speak out of the heart. And, and that's something what a lot of CEOs actually appreciate it a lot because most of the time as more money as you had as more prestige your position was uh the worst got the masks and for me it was i never understood because i grew up with ceos in our co coffee shop and bakery there were a lot of ceos i didn't care i, I still don't care how much they earn what i care is how big is their heart and there is one thing what was really impressive because uh, in our coffee shop, there were a lot of um, people with alcoholic problem. And there is one sentence what I learned from my grandma as well. The only people who tell you the truth are drunken people and children. And it was so interesting because that's, that's I still remember. And I always say, what would be the, the biggest or the worst thing what would happen when I speak what I feel? Either they don't take me serious or they don't listen, nothing else. And as more as, as I saw that the CEOs appreciate me for my, for my opinion, and it didn't matter if I was a woman or not, but they appreciate it because of my knowledge and because of my background. And as more as I saw that, I was like, okay, I stay like this way. But one day, and I'm, I have to say, I really grew up tough. So I actually have a big mouth. I don't, I don't know how to say it in the right words in English, but I, I really have you know, bad mouth sometimes. <laughs> 
or a black humor, an Austrian black humor. Mm -hmm. And one day, I, uh, uh, a colleague of mine, I truly appreciate it. He said to me, lady, you have now hair on your teeth. That means I was a little bit too honest with my big mouth. And I, I, was, I was a little bit shocked because in, I never want to hurt someone only because I, I say what I feel or how I grew up with a, with a big mouth. And it, it, I began to, to think about it and I made myself smaller because I, will, I never want to hurt someone. And, and this was so interesting because I got more and more quiet. I begin now to, to say what I perceive one-to-one -one without any um, holding something back. The only thing what I do, I, I say probably in nicer words because I learned it. And it, it was so interesting. Um, every single encounter you meet in your life, you let in your heart will change you. Either make you bigger or brighter or blossom you up or in another way. And a lot of women telling me, oh, it's only because I'm a woman and all this stuff or other ones. I don't know, they have so many excuses out there. And I say, no, it, it should be never a reason which sex I have, which ethnic background I have, but how honest or big your heart is and which actions you take. And through my story, um, there is one, I don't know if did the movie ever got translated or not, but maybe you, you know the movie. This movie called Momo for Michael Ende. It's also a book, it's a German book. And it was also filmed in Germany. And there was Momo. And Momo was sitting next to the people and was listening. And I was as child and still doing it today. It might be a superpower or a gift. I mean, I'm truly listening to people. Because there's one thing what we learned globally, or we actually never learned, um, is listen with the heart with to other people. But there are so many people out there who actually need only one thing, someone to listen. And not giving advice or coachings or mentoring or whatever, no, listening. And especially those with the biggest needs, and, and um, in, in times of COVID, there are a lot of old people who don't have anyone. They, 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 they or, uh, also other ones. This, 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 this big topic that they don't have anyone to talk to or to listen to. And, and I, for me, it's just, it's just sad. It's, it's sad to know that there's no one there for them and just listen. And when I did my, um, I, I studied health management. And when, the, when I did my practical, uh, practical work, I was in, in Austria in Graz and I, I was uh, working in, at the Caritas and they uh, had um, primary health care for people without any insurance. And most of the people were either homeless, any addictions, and they, it was so interesting. They, they, I, I, it, maybe it's still a gift or however you want to call it, they're coming to me and telling me their story. And this was one of many reasons why I went out of the corporate business world to, to, to learn, to become a coach, to become a mentor and all the stuff. Next year, I begin a further education in mediation. And my, my biggest aim is, but it's, uh, I don't know if I can afford it or not, but my biggest aim is to become a family therapist, to listen, to, to, to listen to the people what actually is behind the mess. <laughs> and there are so many people out there who are yeah. so afraid, are so afraid yeah. Yeah. to take off their mask and be simply themselves. 
you've touched upon so many beautiful, beautiful things, and so many of them resonate with me. But equally, so many of them are are really coming to the core of the difficulties that we as humans face. Mm. Uh, take the take the the last sentence that you just spoke. That people have the masks on and not show their true self. Couldn't agree more with you. But the reality is, often enough, we don't even know who we are, because mm-hmm. we yes. have lived we have lived these artificial lives uh, for such a long time uh, that we just don't know. I certainly remember when I was. Uh, not well when I was drinking more and more and more. The the person that I was, it was a really good doctor. So I Mm -hmm. defined myself, when when people ask me, who are you? Uh, I'm a doctor, I'm Mm -hmm. doing that, uh, my profession. And that was the only way how I could define myself. I but it's was, so common. Yeah, exactly. I was a, I was, yes, I was a father. I was a husband. I was this, this big personality out there. Who am I really? I mm-hmm. had no idea. I had lost myself. And but, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I ever had found myself mm-hmm. prior to actually crashing and burning. So mm-hmm. it is once I went into rehab um, and then came out and and faced my new life it was empty there was mm-hmm. nothing and with hindsight this was beautiful because i could start like with an empty painting i uh, with an empty canvas i could start painting mm-hmm. whatever i wanted and that mm-hmm. was beautiful because i created that life that is now i consider worthwhile living but prior to that when i was just in the rat race going, going, 16 hours days, working, coming home, and then drinking because I needed to crash and relax. Um, That was me. And there are so many people out there who are doing exactly the same. They don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. So it's hard. I mean, how do you go about that? Because due to all that chaos, they are often creating their own problems or sustaining Mm -hmm. problems of others. And you've got all this mess, and then you say, "Ah, oh, but you need to learn to love yourself. You need to yes. learn to." And, uh, and, and you sort of think, "Yeah, really? How does that work?" <laughs> I think many people know that because you begin to search, hmm. and and you pay for it because you want to change something or or give away the pain. And I had actually seven days, one hundred hours work in my best times and I only to make it short I have behind three burnouts I was highly suicide I was overweight became anorexia nervosa I had a really bad car accident I have no idea not even today how I could survive it without anything and I have a broken column where I'm still working on it that I'm getting healthy again because I always say I need a little bit more signs to get it that something on my soul stuff form because I'm a Leo, I know my way very well, which is not true. And, and it, it, it's so interesting. And in my so-called career time or best time, one bottle a day of wine was like, yeah, totally okay. <laughs> And, and even when I grew up with um, alcoholic people, I always felt sorry for them, but you don't get it when you're there as well. And it doesn't matter anymore if it's a woman or a man, by the way. Mm. A lot of women are alcohol abused, mm. but they don't talk about it. You'd, or you, they become not so visible because for men, it's just kind of normal. And for women, no. We have so many prejudices out there, and in my deep, deepest belief, it doesn't matter any in which country, because in, we are just first of all humans, and then all the other categories are coming. And it was like when you're at a certain place in a company, as higher in the management, as normal it 
became to drink alcohol, to take drugs, to take whatever something else, only to be in this clique, in this group, peer group pressure, all that stuff. And when, as more as I came into this, you, you call it a red circle, I, I was not there anymore. And um, after I begin to reflect, I found out I was in the last phase of, of the burnout. That's depersonalization. I had no idea anymore who I was. And there was the question, did I ever knew it before? Today, because I'm, I only have to say I'm, I'm totally into science. I love to go to the university and learn and all that stuff. Today, I, I can reflect it, scientific proven, why we have no idea at all who we are. And at a certain level, a lot of people asking this question. Most of the time, they say the middle classes, around 40, around 50, or through a disease. People begin to reflect the why. And if you, if you take Sean Piaget, he was uh, in, um, in child development. And the first five to seven years, a child has no idea who she or he is. We get all the information from outside. So all the information from outside, our beliefs, our values, our whatever, because they have unhealed tra traumas, traumatas, or whatever, we get all this stuff. And if I ask a person, who are you? Most of the time, they have no fucking idea. And for me, the biggest discovery, the most beautiful path is rediscovering myself. What I love, what I don't like, including the so-called favorite food. It's actually not my favorite food, but it's only connected with some emotions or memories from another person. But when I, when I delete all the stuff, because I, I'm, for many years I've, I'm uh, creating resilience method, copy strategies, and also I um, created a method based on NLP, how to get over abuse and over addictions. I found out that most of the stuff, what I believed before, it's a favorite things, it's not. I just don't like it, but I grew up with it. So I, I thought I just like it. Interesting. And in Austria, we have one belief and I, I have to say, I, I grew up in a countryside and countryside is different than the city. And there was also another sentence I grew up with and was like, what a farmer don't know, a farmer don't eat. <laughs> <laughs> and and when you grew up with that sentence, it's like, yeah, if you, if if the Austrians don't have the schnitzel, they they don't don't, mm -hmm. don't not a good idea. Uh -uh. Yeah. It's the same with schnapps. Uh -uh. Don't take away that stuff. Not a good idea. <laughs> then you have an enemy, an Austrian <laughs> enemy. It's not a good idea either. <laughs> Was der and Bauer net kennt, frisst er net. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, in Germany, we've got the same saying, and it's probably hard to translate into, into <laughs> the English, uh, but it basically reflects the, the at, we don't want to get close to anything that is foreign to us. Uh, yes. We like our comfort circle. We like to be. Don't uh, change comf it. That's okay. right. That's, as long as you're comfortable, it's all good. It doesn't matter how bad this comfort is to ourselves. It doesn't matter how <laughs> bad our food is to ourselves. That is often enough not even food, but rather whatever high calorie, sugar, empty stuff. That's right, because we like it. We we yes. we we sort of think we like it. So that's where this comes from. Just to to, to make Literally. sense for for the in, for the English uh, folks out there. But yeah, it is it is to actually expose yourself to something new and to explore new horizons. 
Yes. For us now, for you, Bernadette, for me now, that is normal. Every single day I wake up and I'm looking forward to making new experiences, to learning more about myself. And that is such a beautiful journey. I'm always putting myself, if this is my comfort zone here, I try to be out there. That's right. I try to be even, <laughs> even, even maybe there. Okay. So anywhere where I'm not comfortable so that I can grow because that is really the stimulus I need. And uh, sometimes it's scary. And every day it's scary for crying out loud. It is, you, when you put yourself out there, there is of course the fear. You don't <laughs> know what is happening. And your brain comes up with all these bad things that possibly <laughs> could happen to you. And in reality, nah. Most of them never, ever, ever, ever happen no. anyhow. And, and even if you actually think about it, making yourself uncomfortable, for example, smiling at a stranger, smiling, mm -hmm. you know, saying hello to someone and an honest hello, not the kind of, of yeah. uh, people like hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, it is just so beautiful. It is so beautiful when you do that because suddenly things come back from the universe. Um, mm -hmm. that, uh, <laughs> whatever you shout into the forest comes back out. Uh, in German, it sounds better. Um, <laughs> the, but, uh, but yeah, there are a lot of sayings basically that just change and, and let the mask maybe a little bit down. It is scary, but I think those of us who have learned that skill to actually show our true selves and live with that, live such a beautiful life that we can, I mean, that's the reason that Bernadette and I are here. We are talking about our experiences. We are talking mm -hmm. about our passion that we have developed now, but that comes from a time when we were, 100 hours, I like it, I like it. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out 100 hours a week. Yeah, I can beat that. Um, but it's just crazy, it's, it's, it's nuts. I mean, this is the normal working hour week is 40 hours. And yes. here we were doing two and a half jobs. And you know, it's just, and we, we prided ourselves on it. There was, there was no looking after yourself. There was no healthy mm. attitude, no. no healthy coping. It was no. drinking drugging in your case I, I, I never got into the drugs but maybe it was just a matter of time maybe i was yes. not with the right people had someone given me a line of cocaine would i have ever snorted it i'm sure there were times when i would have said yes well why not give it a shot kind of thing um yes and peer it, pressure and whatever exactly no it's just it is what it is and especially it's interesting to hear your austrian experience because it very much also reflects the the german experience the english mm -hmm. experience the that kind of of you're a part of a group and mm -hmm. the group defines itself by hard working hard drinking and that is what they call business that was what they call success that is what they call yeah that's the lifestyle and in all fairness 80s 90s that was what what mm -hmm. everyone was portraying this yes. was what you had to be where you needed to be and if you were alternative let's say you were more i don't know an empath who wanted to to walk the forest uh people were thinking yeah and it, <laughs> people people who actually did health care uh, did self-care um mm -hmm. found themselves marginalized because it didn't fit into this business driven yes. model. It's crazy. And nowadays, nowadays we are paying the price that the midlife crisis that you have been alluding mm -hmm. to midlife crisis is a weird thing, but isn't it actually where we, where we stop for a moment and think, is that it? Was that, is my that life? all? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yes. And that's such a beautiful and point to be at. So, I mean, obviously mm -hmm. you meet many, many people who are exactly mm -hmm. at that point. Because that's mm -hmm. when they seek a life coach. Um, is that is that nowadays still as strong this work ethic and this uh, thing? Your clients are they like that? Different, mm -hmm. because those people who are coming to me had 
different challenges, mm. bigger ones, mm. and they're coming to me because they got told that that uh, I'm different because I'm allowed that they can believe in whatever they want to believe yeah. because I'm working with their belief system, not with mine. And um, what's what's in my opinion a little bit dangerous because and you probably know it as well when you have bad times you begin to search and there are a lot of loud people out there <laughs> who can who can damage more than can what they can do good mm. but um and it i'm i don't know if it's still it's still a, a topic but i think more than ever the spiritual so-called path can be dangerous as well and i met a lot of people who were already with to went to a lot of other ones and they tell me stories about it and how much they paid for it and all the stuff. I'm, I was sitting there like, what? <laughs> I mean, I, I did a lot of crazy stuff, but um, uh, I still never lost my so-called mind. But maybe because I grew up at the countryside again and I grew up very grounded. And and there are a lot of stuff what's not not you know like um, which is not uh, what I, I say. I mean, this doesn't feel good. This doesn't sound good. This is so weird <laughs> that it doesn't make any sense to me why I should pay for it and do it. But there are still people out there. And as more as I miss people, yes. Sorry, no, I was about to say, I mean, the, the, the life coaching, health coaching is very unregulated. It is completely, yes. ab, there are, there are mm -hmm. cowboys out there. There are people mm -hmm. out there who are exceptionally good, and there are people who absolutely make money. The, the, yes. Yeah, uh, I mean, please, the, the, oh, yeah, that's, that's the problem, isn't it? You, you always need to, to figure out, uh, is there, is there yeah. common sense? But, uh, People who are in, in stress and people who are in distress, they they grab anything Everything. that comes Everything. their way. Yes. And yes. how does it come your way? Maybe via uh, something on Facebook, uh, an mm -hmm. advertisement that someone puts there. Well, that advertisement, it doesn't cost much to produce. Anyone mm -hmm. can do it. Anyone can make sort of look themselves good. And... Wow, then you go along with that and mm -hmm. open yourself up to maybe a process that is not so beneficial to you. So you're mm -hmm. quite right. It's actually an interesting point you're making. How do you do you find a coach? How do you find a good healer? Um, yes. Tricky one. For me, for me, it was it was like I always knew, but but I grew up. I don't want to say lonely, but I I I'm used to it to help myself. Not asking other ones, but finding solutions for myself. So after my first burnout, and I lost more than 20 kilos back then. And I always knew, don't go to the doctor and don't go to any uh, psychologist because they are more crazy than you. And I, I would never take any medicaments, uh, dep depressive or whatever, yeah. because it doesn't make any changes, mm. but only suppress something. Mm. So I begin to read a lot and I truly I still say it, but NLP saved my life because then I begin to understand why I think and act the way I do out of my beliefs, out of my entity and what, what I learned and all this stuff. And I got all the tools for myself to help myself. And so yes, there's still... Mm -hmm. For those of you listening out there, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, is a yes. is a, a a a psychological technique method. to realize a okay. method yeah what is happening uh in your brain and how to 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 change it how to actually work with your brain in a very productive way so nlp is 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 one of those things out there that uh, is is used by many 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 people and and Tony Robbins is a big yeah. a big big name in that that NLP but but there's so many others so NLP is, is a technique one of many techniques um, yes. to help you to get on with life 
and I also did further education with other methods and and all the stuff. And um, but as more as I changed my thinking and my acting, as more as changed my life, mm. my surrounding, mm. my environment, because the so-called friends, like ninety percent of the so-called friends are not there anymore. But I found <laughs> beautiful other ones supporting, uh, nurturing, yeah. Yeah. and and you are in a um, you are in a world is 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 your guidance how the world you see it, and I I I'm talking so many times uh, about Paul Watzlawick. Mm -hmm. Paul Watzlawick was ex actually an Austrian who become known to the Palo Alto team um, around uh, Virginia Satir, who is the founder of the family therapist. And he always said, how real is reality? And if you see out there how many conflicts we have, mm -hmm. you maybe understand that there are a lot of realities out there and everybody believes that their reality is the <laughs> most real ones. And that's not true. It's always based on the way what we learned, what we got, what we, what we perceived, the values and all the stuff. But I have to say I'm, I'm a fan of the constructivism because it makes the most sense of myself. And I put it on as basic for my PhD research in the field of health training. Hmm. And and, it's yeah. quite interesting because what you're saying there, translated into simpler words it is mm -hmm. uh if if two people are going to the same party and uh one of them is going in and standing in the front and he is looking at this couple who are madly in love and uh staring in each other's eyes give themselves gentle kisses um that is one impression. His friend is in the kitchen where there are two guys are fighting and are, are, are angry with each other. Now both have been at the same party. Both come away and say, whoa, this was a shit party. The other one says, no, this was the most beautiful party I've ever seen. So mm -hmm. both were at the same party, but different perceptions, different views, different, different things triggered them. And I think mm -hmm. that is that is that's what I always say. When when there's a row, there is there are always three sides to a story: his, yeah. hers, and the truth. And yeah. and because we all all see different things, so a very good point that you're making there. And how how we filter information mm -hmm. because we actually get way much more information, but it depends how we can handle it or not, mm -hmm. and uh, which kind of filter we are using. And it's so it's so interesting. I always say the stuff what I'm doing today, I actually only created for myself to survive. I never thought about it that I can support and nurture other ones with it. I only wanted to have a solution for myself that I don't kill myself. <laughs> and I was so close. I still remember I was in France. There was no one there. I was in such bad condition. I, I lost more than 20 kilos. And uh, for me, it was not any sense anymore to be here because the working colleagues telling me that I'm shit only because I'm a woman and from Austria. The work was shit. Everything was shit, of course. And I was like, well, I'm here. And uh, there was only one thought that was actually the reason why I'm still sitting here. And it was like, I can't do that to my mom that I killed myself in France cutting off my pulse and being in my own blood, when my mom would know that she would be upset. That's it. And, and when I came back home, I saw that my mom was, was in a very bad health condition. I didn't know. And I knew I have to be stronger. And let's do it. And find solutions. Today, I created my own nutrition work, my own coaching therapy style. I get my own research center in Austria, physically, hopefully next year, hey. to research on it and do all the stuff, whatever it takes to nurture and support as much as possible. If I have to do it for free, I don't care. I create what I actually needed 20 years ago because our healthcare system is not able to do health promotion. Mm. And this, this, is, this is something... My maybe my inner drive 
my big why, my whatever. But seeing so many people, and we, we see daily more and more, maybe through COVID, I don't believe it, but COVID only triggers something, that something comes out was there already. But everybody out there, and it doesn't depend on money, everybody out there has the birthright to have a fulfilling life, giving their vision into actions. And if I talk to children, everybody of us know from inside out why they are here and what they want to become. And we just forget through education, through something other people believe is more important, like working seven days, 100 hours for, I don't know anymore. And if you ask a lot of people who are in the middle of changing and asking themselves why I'm here and what do I love to do, most of the time they have no idea anymore why they came that far what they did because it's no fun. So I ask your audience at the end of your life for what do you want to be known and what do you want to actually did. And I said one thing to my one of my best friends on my grave, actually on my on my urne. Tombstone, uh, um, yeah. Uh, well, uh, call it a tombstone on your. Yes. On, yeah. Tomb. I want to have. She did it her way. <laughs> but be it. simply me, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. And she gave a fuck about everybody else what they are thinking. Good. Period. I think that is uh, that is one of those beautiful, honest sentiments that actually means so much. It's not just a joke. It is actually something real. I've 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 written my steps to sobriety here, so my my book mm -hmm. here, which is at the moment out, and I'm just finishing putting the finishing touches onto a workbook um, mm -hmm. that uh, goes along with that. Now. The workbook this is exactly one of the questions that i ask you to do uh to write your own epitaph to write your own legacy what do you think what would you write right now about your life what have you left mm -hmm. behind if you were to die right now and i must say that in the past what had i written then oh my god Nowadays, I can write something really nice and say, mm -hmm. wow, this is, in other words, I'm proud to look into the mirror. And yes. that is something that, that, that I've come to. So your question is so valid. Guys out there, who are you? Who do you want to be remembered as? As the mm -hmm. way, the worker, worker, worker. I was there 100 hours. Yay. Uh, if I could have just spent one more hour on my desk, said no one ever at their deathbed. Okay. Nope. So, <laughs> so just, just, you know, think about it. And, and maybe if that rattles your cage, if that makes you think, then maybe it's time for you to look out for, for alternatives. And with mm. that, I don't mean stop your job, quit your job, and and find a, a guru on a mountaintop. That's not what I'm saying. I'm I'm, mm. I'm trying for you to to press the stop button on your life and actually go somewhere, get yourself a nice cup of coffee, or a nice cup of tea, or a glass of water, and just sit there and mm -hmm. just actually think. Where are we at? Are mm. you happy where you are? And if you're truly happy in, in as, as a spiritual being, as a creative being, as a, as a person in, with your own health, uh, if you're truly happy, fine. Perfect. You're, Perfect. Exactly. I'm so pleased for you. If you're not, maybe it's time to look at that. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as uh, what you just said, Bernadette, you, you, you did your own way. You did your way in mm -hmm. the sense of you rather preferred not to work with doctors, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's one thing to be said about that. Sometimes there are 
biological reasons um, yes. why you feel the way you feel. Mm -hmm. So it is quite important. For example, let's say you had developed a problem with your thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. Now that thyroid, uh, if that is underactive, it can make you really down and out. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. as wherever you are, if 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 it is if you feel it's time for a change. One of the things I, I recommend you to do is actually go to your GP, go to your family yes. physician and actually say, hey, look, can we just do a baseline? Can you just mm -hmm. look at me top to bottom? Health check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and health check. Um, and you might very well find that there is something there that a simple intervention or a simple medication or something like that can change so mm -hmm. that biologically, you haven't missed something. I think that's really, really, really important um, because there is there are so many things that can creep up mm -hmm. on you, especially mm -hmm. when you're turning 40, 50. Mm -hmm. uh, so things are changing yes. okay, in your body. So let's not be silly there. So therefore, make sure that you're not overlooking something. Yes. And then in addition to that, work with your GP, work with the health system if there's things to be done. In addition to that, Look yes. at your nutrition, look at your spirituality, look at all those things that 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 are there for you to tackle. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, then your life starts blossoming. But yes. you would be uh, I've seen cases where people went to wonder healers to mm -hmm to alternative medicine specialists and they spent months and months and months and then it was too late to deal with the cancer. And then, so it was too late to deal with the aneurysm that ultimately killed them and things like that. So it is, it is really, really important to not just exclude one thing. So if you're no. saying, no, no, it's all doctors mm -hmm. and all vibrations and crystals and herbs and all that is rubbish that's a stupid position in my mind if you are saying oh no no doctors are evil medications under no circumstance and i only go for that that's just the stupid Take i have i have yes i'm in this at the same direction and i build bridges to classical medicine and complementary because it always depends on what you believe. For me back then, 20 years, I, I visit my doctor, of course, because of the blood and all this stuff, but the other stuff didn't work for me. So I found myself solutions. But today I have a network with incredible, beautiful people. Mm. There are therapists, the same as doctors and all this stuff. And I go, I think nearly 20 years, at least once, actually, twice per day, uh, per year, to my doctor, checking my blood, my hormones, mm. and everything else. That's right. And based on that, I change my diet mm. and everything else. And today I have, because I'm coming, I am actually was today at my doctor, my favorite one. <laughs> he, he's you. not only cute, he's really good. <laughs> um, he, uh, we, we, I have better blood results than I had 15 years ago. The same uh -huh. with the hormones and all this stuff. And this is something, um, if you empower yourself, overtake 100% uh, self, you know, taking care of yourself, you choose differently than when you go to one person, another person, and then, then. Absolutely. And, and for me, it's always, if I combine everything, then truly change can come. And there is one person, he's, she's from Germany. Her name is Vera Birkenbiel. I could meet her a little bit and she, she was actually autistic. And she didn't found anything for herself. So she created her own way of learning, her way, her own way of, of I don't know, do, do you know her? Mm -hmm. she, she is using both brains of learning and all this stuff. So it's beautiful, she, she's not alive anymore. But uh, she was one of many role models. I truly believe that you meet exactly the, the right persons at the right time to support you. 
and and that this was one of many reasons to say why I will find myself uh, solutions. And and next to NLP and other stuff and I'm I'm a kind of a person. Give me something. I'm pretty sure I will make it better. I just you know give it away. And there's a couple of stuff what you don't need. And there's a couple of stuff what you miss. I just give it together and I will give it back. And then I take the ne next stuff. So I'm I'm truly born for research. And, and I but, but yes. may I just may I just highlight what you're doing? You're mm -hmm. taking you're taking action. You are not just sitting there. You're not listening. No. You're, yes, you do listen very oh, much so. Yes, but, different. But you do take action. You analyze mm -hmm. and then you say, okay, that doesn't work. So let's get rid of that. That is taking action. Uh, yes. You listen. That is actually taking action. You decide to listen, not just to play on your, on your iPhone or whatever. No, you actually actively listen. That is taking action. That is putting yourself into the moment and that yes. is such a beautiful thing so that is uh, that, again and again and again when I listen to you I see actually you taking action you taking control of your life and helping others to take control back in their life yes. and to for them to make decisions that they then can evaluate and see mm -hmm. are these decisions, these new actions that they have taken, are they getting them into the right way, the way that they want to go, their goals, and because everyone else, everyone has different goals. So, so yes. I love the way you work with your clients and actually say, okay, where do you need to be and tell me more about you, and etc. So no, it is, it, that is, that's the way to go, no doubt about that. But uh, that, tell me, if people want to get hold of you, if people want to work with you, um, how does that work? You will find me on social media everywhere. <laughs> Except I'm not at TikTok anymore, but all the rest, I'm there. Cool. So Bernadette Bruckner, um, <laughs> and I put the links to Bernadette <laughs> down there into the description of the video and of the podcast. And but give me a sneak brief you now because I know you're you're building and dreaming and <laughs> uh, and and thinking about a research center. You're mm -hmm. thinking about a, a, um, a frequency uh, bowl, so to speak, for for people to actually literally walk in and things like that. Um, is that is that something that becomes more real as time goes on? So mm -hmm. at I have only one big problem because I don't know where I will settle myself next year. And that's why the research center has no, no settling either. And there is, there is another big dream because I have big visions. I want to have my own healthcare center, holistic yeah. one. And I have three plans because uh, I found so many people who want to go in the same direction. But, um, I have, I, I'm, I'm, I send out to the universe, just give me the right place. And I'm in the middle of, of uh, because I have all the plans, I have, I'm tr serious. I, I'm, my biggest dream is to combine classical medicine with complementary medicine, hand in hand. And that the person, that the humans be in the middle again and not the prophet. Mm -hmm. um, and that health promotion is not a wording anymore in Austria, but pure living. Mm. And that's where I'm in the middle of my dreams. Which is beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. So guys, watch that space, uh, because there might very well be uh, a new Austrian uh, solution coming up there mm -hmm. for, to, yes. <laughs> for you to actually find yourself and, and get the guidance that you need. Because you're quite mm -hmm. right, uh, Bernadette, it is a multidisciplinary uh, thing to be healthy so you you can't just go once to the gym you can't just have one salad and then you think that's it uh, it doesn't work like that you need to work to make lots of little decisions yes. throughout your day but if you get the guidance where to go then it is actually a beautiful beautiful journey and mm -hmm. it is it is exciting so i'm really really pleased for you hopefully the universe will will send you the message soon so that you can yes. physically actually um find your your center literally of the center of your universe uh, in austria or wherever it may be 
Uh, mm -hmm. But until then, people can get hold of you and work with you. I know that you have got international clients, mm -hmm. so it is wonderful. So don't, guys, if, if today's interview rang a bell with you, get in touch with Bernadette. Uh, it is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just so pleased to have met you and, and work Vice with you. And I, I can't, uh, I actually can't wait to see to see where you are going with your future and with your plans because there's you are you have a dream you turn that into a vision you turn that into a mission and that you know there's actually no stopping you so that's <laughs> that's fantastic. Not so, even a car accident. Uh, on the contrary, sometimes we need those things because it actually yes. solidifies our thinking and it says no i actually this was the wake up call that i needed from yes. the universe so now i know really truly hand on heart what i need to do so let's do it no more excuses yes. so yeah. there you go there you go but i did thank you so much for coming on to my show uh it was an absolute honor it was my deepest pleasure mm. and uh austria greets new zealand <laughs> Indeed. And maybe one one day you you, you get an apple strudel or a sakadote and we can have the coffee not only online but offline. Oh, that would be so nice. That would be so nice. Apple strudel uh, is definitely uh, one of my favorites. Uh, and Austria is a beautiful country. So hopefully, yes. hopefully this COVID uh, will soon be more man can manageable. Again. That's right. Exactly. And you guys out there, look after yourself. I sent you lots of hugs. I wish you all the power of the universe to make the right decisions. And they may include an Apfelstrudel or a Käsekuchen or something like that, <laughs> a cheesecake. That is, there are certain things that just sometimes the soul needs, even mm -hmm. if your body says, you're sure about all that sugar and the cream? Yes. And no, som yes, som we are. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you yes, need to. We are. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, look after yourself. Bye. Bye. <laughs>